sang forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares all past home at last ever to rejoice when before me billows rise from the mighty deep then my lord directs my bark he does safely keep and he leads me gently on through this world below he's a real friend to me oh i love him so oh i want to see him look upon his face to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice Praise the Lord, everyone. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord today. It's good to be in this house today with all of you saints. Thank the Lord for this opportunity today. At this time, I'm asking to uh, remember the sick and afflicted. Remember the people all over the world that are suffering now, suffering so much more than what we are uh, well, at least here in Fort Wayne, most of us aren't going through bombs and missiles and things. Being, uh, we have home and heat in our homes today. We understand that many places in Europe today, there's no power at all. They don't have water. And we are appreciative that the Lord has blessed us with those necessities today. And at this time, we'd like to go into prayer, and we ask that you remember all the people that need prayer today. Precious Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity that you have given us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for a place to come and call upon your name, Lord, to give you praise, to give you thanks, Lord, O oh God, because we realize that you have blessed us. Lord, we ask, and Lord, that you remember those that would like to be here in church today, but because of the, the pain maybe in their bodies, Lord, uh, maybe other things, Lord, other reasons why they're not here today, Lord, but remember them. Remember those that are going through uh, situations in life right now, Lord. Lift them up, oh God, send them help, Lord. Bless them, we pray. And oh God, as we go into this lesson today, Lord, open up our hearts and under, our understanding, Lord, that we will get what you have for us this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. At this time, we will go into our Sunday school, and it's found on page 90, I believe it is, in our lessons today. On November the 20th, I'm sorry, on page 96. And we're going to ask uh, Sister Carter as we go into this lesson about wisdom waits, and if she will go and read our focus point. Now, focus voice. Ecclesiastics 3 and 11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out that the, the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Amen. And you go ahead and. Okay, so we're going to start talking about the. Uh, teaching outline and the icebreaker says what is the fastest you have ever driven to avoid being late <coughs> has anybody here ever driven <coughs> fast to avoid from being late yes i was late for work um, my second job acjc i make a fast hours I was late. I was going down Washington Road, hit hit to Well Street. I was going 65 
in a 40, and the cop pulled me over, and he said, do you realize how fast you were going? I said, I'm late to work. And I, he said, well, okay, slow down, but I gave you a warning. But So that's the, the fastest I think I drew because I got pulled over because I was late to work. Okay. And why were you late? I guess the lesson talk about time. I didn't manage my time right because I was trying to stay and watch uh, uh, our basketball team play. Um, and it was a real, and the game went in overtime. And I felt like I didn't want to miss, but I know I had to be at work at 4.30. So it's my fault, so yes. Okay. So which was more important, getting to work on time or watching the game? At that present time, it was more important to watch the game than being on work on time. Okay, so, and you were the one that made that decision. You know, and so as we have to do today, we have to make a decision what's important, most important. You know, when it comes to natural things or spiritual things, we do have to, and if you, um, you had the ability to make that decision, it was up to you, it wasn't up to anybody else, you know, whether you would be there on time or not. Okay. And it goes on, so there is a time for every purpose and every activity. And that's what we're trying to get in our mind today, but to set up priorities and realize that we have only so much time. We have 24 hours every day in, in, in our, our every day we have 24 hours to do what we have to do that day. And we can make up our mind what we're gonna do. <coughs> and it's only up to us, nobody else can make that time, make that up for us. But we have to decide how we're gonna to, uh, segment all of our, the different activities that we need to do the, that day. Seasons are a natural part of life. It's just natural. There's things that's going on, you know, we have our babies to take care of, we have to get to work, we have to get to sleep, you know. And if we let any of that get out of line, our so that it starts uh, dictating it's, it, it's to us, then we can find ourselves in some trouble. Wisdom in, includes knowing how to wait patiently for the right season. God has given us seasons. He's given us times, even in 24-hour uh, segments. He's given us winter season, all those times. And if we look forward and plan them right, things do go better if we plan. Okay. I will follow God's plan and will for my life. That's the most important thing. We can make plans for ourselves and things. But if we don't include the Lord there, then we're losing out. And as we go into this lesson, we'll see that we only have so much time for whatever mm -hmm. we're going to do. Can you give it to Sister Haywood? Yeah. Okay. And Sister Carter, would you go ahead and read the lesson connection? The soldiers all remained in their ranks steadfastly staring, standing at attention. If their legs hurt, they ignored the pain. If their arms ached, they gave no hint of discomfort. If a fly landed on their nose, they resisted the urge to shoo it away. They were all disciplined, but they seemed even more circumspect today. Their superior had demanded that every crease in their uniform be perfect and every weapon glisten in the sun. Today, the great general Napoleon would pass through their midst. Amen. And that brings back old memories of being in the military, and especially the day that you graduate. You know, you're standing there in <clears throat> attention, and no matter whether it's a fly or a new or anything else, you don't move. You know, and if your legs locked or you feel like you want to pass out, you still stand there. You know, you don't want to be the one that collapse or that messes up or so that day, but you stand there, no matter how long it takes, <coughs> you
you know you're going to stand there in attention. Go ahead, Sister Carter. The commanding officers hid any nervousness. They could have held in the perspiration that beaded down their necks. They would have. They would have done nearly anything to please their commander in chief. Today was a day was a day to stand out, but not in the wrong way, by lining up properly and adhering to every military protocol. The officers hoped they could advance in rank. If one of their comrades' a regiment failed the test, they could take his position. White ambition seethed through the army as each man, no matter his position hope to be the example exemplar of the true warrior their general hope to see amen it, you know that they stand in, in uh, formation you don't want to one reason why you don't want to mess up because you've been with your commanding uh, your company commander for weeks or maybe even months and you don't want to embarrass him either because he has put all that effort or for training you, and you want to look like a real soldier that day, you know. So you don't want to mess up because you know that's a reflection on him. Because you're passing, you're not. Your company is not the only company passing in front of the command, the generals, and all that that day. So you want to make sure that your company looks sharp and everything. Yes, go ahead, bro. Man, Deacon, um, I'm quite sure y'all have noticed. I was going to ask, have you noticed? But Saints. It is something how um, when we move in God's timing and, and, and ask him to show us that through prayer and, and reading his word, that things pretty much work out right. But when we try to do like uh, Sarah and, and, and go outside God's timing, we kind of mess up. Amen. You know, she wanted to have that baby. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Amen. So, um, so it's important. And the other thing, too, that... We even learn in the military that even though there's the general there, but the general needs sergeants, he needs captains. And the same in the church situation. The pastor needs people that he can depend on. He can't run a church by himself, but for the church to be effective, everybody needs to be in their place and at their, the right time. Okay. Sister Carter, would you read on? Napoleon rode on a great steed, inspecting the troops that remained quiet and disciplined. Then the unthinkable happened. Something spooked Napoleon's horse. The beast writhed and bucked, attempting to dislodge the great general. All the officers and soldiers held fast to their positions, unsure of what to do. The seem then seemingly out of nowhere, a soldier broke rank and came to the aid of his general. He seized the horse by the reins, calming the animal with great respect. He held out the reins to Napoleon. Napoleon then took from the low-ranking soldier and simply said, Thank you, Captain. Amen. Because the soldier saw a need and met it, he advanced when others remained still, stuck to rituals and protocols. The story proves that timing is everything. The soldier might have taken many years to reach the rank of captain, or he, might, he, or he might never have achieved it. Timing made all the difference. The soldier's actions were not rash. They were born out of the times the soldier had exercised patience through training, discipline, and following orders. Like him, we must serve the Lord patiently and wait for the opportunity to serve at a higher level. We must patiently trust God's timing for our lives. Amen. So that's showing us that no matter who we are or where our position are, there can come a time that we may be needed in a much higher position. From that, that soldier to go from where he was to a captain was a big step, but he was ready when that opportunity came. And we have to think about that even in the church situation. There's going to be times when the pastor even need somebody to step up even out of polar call okay but if we tune in to the things of god and things we'll understand that we don't ever want to step out before it's time but we want to be there when it's time yes brother thank you 
and I, as I look through the lesson, I always remind myself um, to uh, uh, take what's good and then the other I just let it fly past. Like the commentator, sometimes I disagree with the commentator's example, okay, but not the scripture. Like, we all know Napoleon, okay, yes, he's fine, Deacon, you know, he's a good general, but I, I just taken aback that why they didn't use Gideon? Because Gideon was a good general and heard from the Lord and had to wait and told them man that the ones that lap like a dog and all that. Y'all know the story. Mm -hmm. but I, my point I was trying to make, you know, I'm just, I just be looking at sometime how the commentators, they use uh, a lot of worldly figures. And, mm -hmm. and that's okay, you know, because you always tie it right back to the scripture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Any other comments this morning? Sister Curry, you go ahead and read next. Oh, Evelina. Yes. I want to. Because we have young ministers that want to jump out there and start preaching and doing. But God, maybe God called them, but it's not the time. But they want to rush and get out there. And when they fall, they want to blame it on everybody but themselves because they didn't wait on God. You, you don't push. It said God made room for you. Your, 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 your gift yes. makes mm -hmm. room for you. So there's no use to, that you don't need to rush. Just let God do what he do. And when you stand up before the people, you will have the right words. And God would anoint you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. But not when you go on your own time. Amen. Right. You're going on your own time. Yeah, go ahead, bro. I can call it a uh, scripture say the race is not given to the swift. So some, uh, uh, slow down. Slow down and be patient and wait on God. Don't, do not get ahead of Bible said, do not be swift, but run this race with patience. Amen. You can tear up things moving too fast. As a matter of fact, you get yourself embarrassed, too, because you thought you was ready, okay, but you wasn't ready. You didn't go through all the procedures and all the training that you needed and the watching and learning from those who went before you, so you tear something up. We're still talking about God's timing. Sister Carter, read on, please. There is a time for every purpose and activity. Our daily lives are governed by time. Our alarm clocks jolt some of us out of bed while others desperately slap at the snooze button to get a few more Z's. The early risers sip coffee peacefully while the sleepyheads desperately try to put the coffee in a to-go cup. Appointments. Coffee breaks, lunch breaks, coffee on the go to club, on the go cup, coffee in a in a in a two in a to go cup, appointments, coffee breaks, lunch breaks, and project deadlines dictate most of our activities. Even when the clock signals the end of the workday, we know we will have to do everything all over again the next day. Plus, we may have to carve out more time for kids practices grocery shopping, and meal planning and preparation. At the end of the day, we may ask ourselves, where did all the time go? Amen. There again, that's why we need to understand time and things. Because we only have so much time to get everything done. You know? And it even comes to serving the Lord and things. Just like today, now, we that are here today, we made sure that we didn't have anything in our way that we couldn't get to church today. You know, nothing, because that's why we're here, because we had set this time ahead. You know, we had planned this. We knew that this is where we wanted to be this time. <coughs> so, Sister Carter, go ahead and read. Time flies, especially when we're having fun. We try to avoid being late by getting, getting to work in the nick of time. Sometimes we run out of time, other times we have some spare time. Time and time again, we realize we need to make more time for God. Amen. We need to make more time for God, family and friends. Yet we still have to work because time is money. We can waste time, we can kill time, we can have a well of a time or a hard time. When we have a hard time, 
We hope, the say, we hope the saying is true that time heals all wounds. In the end, we know that only time will tell. Hopefully, we will figure out this time, this time thing because we cannot turn back the hands of time no matter how hard we try. Someday, we will all be out of time Amen. and face with eternity. That's a thought that we need to all keep in our minds that we someday we will run out of time. Okay. And now that we have time, we want to use it wisely. We have time for, um, because sometimes we go back and look and we didn't use our time wisely. Sometimes we may look back and see that we really didn't spend the time with our children that we should have, you know, and sometimes we see results of that. That maybe, or maybe we didn't show them love because we never had time to do anything with them. You know, it was always, we was one, on one track. You know, go ahead, bro. And, and ministers and deacon, I don't mean to be a negative Nancy, okay? But time don't heal all wounds. Mm -hmm. Jesus does. I had some arts against my family. For years, it didn't heal. But oh, when I got saved and got the Holy Ghost and turned it over to Jesus. He got healed, but time didn't, didn't heal my wound. Yeah. That's right. We think that if we do this, do we do that, it's going to be all right. But when God steps in, it's, it's his time, not our time. When he wants something, he's going to bring it forth. And when he don't want it, it will not come forth. Mm -hmm. And if you try to push it, you, it's something that I think the pastor said. You can't put <coughs> new wine in old bag because it bursts. So we have to realize that even though you, you, you want to think it's your time, God, like you said, he do heal all wounds because he knows that your life has to be an example to your family. So they had to know that you had changed. And the only way they were gonna know that you was changed, that you was filled with the Holy Ghost, and you went to them and, and talked to them. I'm assuming that's what you did. That's what I you went to and, and, and asked for forgiveness or tell them, I'm sorry for all this and that. But the, it's just the time, God's timing, always. We'll see, because what we know today, if we hold on to the Lord, we will be better tomorrow. Okay, because we're not the best that we can be today. And, and when it goes back to talking about even with the family, I realized over time that I did not have the proper skills to reach my family uh, then as I do today. Because, you know, when I first, years ago, I was, you know, hitting them hard, you know and didn't know how to show, show them love and things. But by watching other people, by coming to church, by praying, by letting the Lord work with me over time, I became better at dealing with my family, okay? And dealing with other people even in the streets. So time helped me there, you know. Sister Carter, would you go ahead and go from where you were at? Seasons are a natural part of life. Preacher wrote, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Now, the, who wrote that? Ecclesiastes 3 and 1. And when we talk about the preacher, who are we talking about? Solomon. We're talking about Solomon. And what does the Bible say about that man? He was wise. He was wise. So we ought to take heed of the things that he's saying, you know. And he's telling us that there's a season for everything. You know. And it's it's not good when we miss a season, you know, because we constantly need to be learning and getting better. And y'all heard me say this before too. Over the years, and I think I've been a pretty decent husband, you know, but I tell the Lord that if he gives me more time, I will be even better, you know, because, you know, we should be able to look back and see mistakes that we made in life or how that we could do things better so that when things come up next time, we can handle it better. 
we don't want to always be, be handling everything the same, you know, in 1975 as we are in 2022, because we should have progressed. Okay. So, Sister Carter, go ahead. Let me read next. God part. ordered the times and seasons for us. Since God is eternal, he is timeless. Time did not exist at the beginning of creation. Since the Almighty was an everlasting being not governed by time, time did not need to exist. In fact, for the first three days of creation, there really was not such a thing as time. Then on the fourth day, the Lord created the sun as the greater light to rule the day and the moon as the lesser light to rule the night. These lights allowed there to be signs, seasons, days, and years. Although God did not need time, he knew his creation would. Despite being governed by time, humans often fail to manage, manage it as well as they should. While some succeed in the endeavor, in the natural world, they fail spiritually. They neglect eternal things. Therefore, the psalmist wrote, so teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Amen. So we should be able to get wisdom if we number our days and realize that we only have so much time. And as she read earlier, Jesus Christ himself didn't need time, but he knew that his creation needs time. And you know what, and this is something that I, I will always say too, that even in my life time, I've seen God move time. Or give time. And what I'm saying, and maybe everybody hasn't uh, maybe realized this or um, <clears throat> had this happen in their life, but I believe that God can move time for his people. Amen. He can speed it up or he can set it back. Remember the time when the sun didn't, uh, kept shining longer so they could win the battle? Okay. But God has the power over time. We don't, you know. I still say that I saw some miracles in my life because there was times when I was working when I needed to get some things done and the time, I did not have enough time to get it done in the natural. And God helped me to get everything I needed to get done that I shouldn't have been able to get it done in the time that I did. I can remember times when I said, and I need to see all these people today, and how am I going to do it? But by the time that the evening came or the end of the day, I had saw all those people traveled all those distance that I needed to travel that day. See, because remember, God has time in his hands, and he can do anything. And when we need more time for something, God can give us more time, you know, or he can stop time. I can tell you another situation, because sometimes we forget little bitty things, okay? But there was a time just recently, and I knew my wife wanted me to, I was supposed to be going somewhere with her, and something came up that I needed to take care of something. And I knew that if I did the other thing, because I needed to go pick up a car is what it was in Columbia City. And I didn't see how in the world I was going to get this done. And I said, man, my wife is really going to be upset with me because I hadn't set up the time properly to do what, all the things I need to do that day. And before I knew it, the gentleman called me and said, Jerry, don't come to Plumbia City because my brother is going to bring, come with me to bring the car. And it happened so fast. And I said, look at God. You know, and he can do that. We can't always do that, but God can do that every time. Go ahead. Amen. Yes. I remember one time when I was the um, uh, uh, president of the young people, and I get it from my mom, Evelina, um, we used to go to the ABSA and we took the van. It was in December, it was the winter, and I had the, all the young people in there, about 14 and 15, and it started snowing, coming back for him. And I said, Lord, if you just hold the snow, because I don't feel comfortable driving 15 young people in the van. If you just hold the snow until 
we get to at least Muncie or Anderson. I mean, until we get to Goshen or if we get to Marin, then we, I feel more comfortable. But God is done exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think. By the time I pull off a 469 and start we, and ride the Fort Wayne, it starts snowing. So you're right, God can hold the snow. <laughs> and God can't hold it because in time like that. He can hold back the storm. Yes, he can. So we got to believe on him and give it to him and follow him and be in time with him. We don't want to run ahead of God. I heard Sister Evelina say earlier uh, about uh, young people sometimes when they feel they're called to the ministry and things and how they run so fast. And that made me think the scripture says that uh, they have the the zeal but not according to knowledge you know and you can have the desire to do something but it ain't time for you to do it yet and so don't try to move somebody else out so you can move in because you may tear some things up you know and embarrass yourself so we're talking about timing okay sister carter where did you leave off at <coughs> Wisdom includes knowing how to wait patiently for the right season. Amen. Wisdom helps us to excuse me, differentiate between various seasons in our lives and to patiently wait for the right one. The, pre the preacher listed a number of seasons in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 starting with the big picture of a time to be born and a time to die. Along our journey on the earth, we must, point, we, must, we must plant at the proper time, and we must patiently wait for the harvest. Sometimes we feel desperate for the, pro, for the produce our labors will bring, but God often allows his blessings to cultivate a bit longer to reward us greatly. During times of struggle in our lives, we need time to heal. When things are broken down, we need to take time to mourn and give ourselves time to recover. But we must also realize we will build up again, dancing and rejoicing in the wonder-working power of God's restoration. Throughout all these seasons, the cycle of life continues. Sometimes we have great prosperity in times of getting. Then life becomes difficult and we experience a season of loss. We might be tempted to rend our garments at time, in, in times of loss and mourning, but, our due time, but in due time, we must pull ourselves together with the help of the Lord, family, and friends to realize it is a time to sew things back together again. Amen. And, and you know, I would think if we all look back in our life, I think we could find some times that we experienced some loss because we moved too fast. Yes. You know, even with, I can think of, uh, in my own situation when there's been times when I, I wanted to say something or speak out and I realized and I thought about time that maybe it was not time for me to speak right then and I was so glad because if I had spoke or th threw in what I wanted to say then I would have embarrassed myself and been out of line so sometimes even when the, we have to realize it's not our time to speak you know, if we hold our, our, our words just for a little while, the Lord will show us that we didn't have a good picture of what was going on or that it wasn't time for us to speak. Yes. Because I hear some people say, well, I'm going to say what's on my mind. Well, sometimes you can mess up if it's not time. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Amen. Have you all noticed... You can have degrees, qualifications, experience. But James says in 4 and 10, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. and he will exalt, lift you up. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that what God has for us, that once, if we just humble ourselves, it may not come today, it may not come five years, but he will put you where you belong. Amen. Well, that makes me think about, I know some people who has additional degrees and things. 
and because of them moving so fast, they have caused themselves much hurt. I can think of uh, someone in my family, I guess you would say right now, that has his doctor's degree, but he don't have a job today. And one reason because he would go in, and this is some of the things that I was told by people, even family members in one state, you know, and when you hear so many people that have the, uh, the connection with those people tell you how they hurt themselves. You know, I had other teachers tell me how that this particular person, when he was at certain schools, systems, how he had tore up, got himself in trouble. Then someone that I knew from way back in junior high in another city where he had went and was in charge of, he was the, uh, the uh, director of schools. What do you call it? The uh, superintendent of schools. And he went in fast, changing things, you know. And he hurt himself real quick. They got him out of there, paid him off and got him out. And since then, he's having difficulties even finding jobs today because he tore his pants a number of times, you know. And uh, so that happens sometimes because you move too fast. And you, all of us probably know people like that before. You know, I can think of another person that I went to school with and with their masters and things, and they started off good, but today they have tore themselves up so bad that I don't even know if they have a job today, you know. So their timing, they didn't understand the timing. Yeah. Sister Carter, where are you, where are you at? Um, I will follow God's plan and will for my life. <clears throat> Go ahead. We must willingly make the commitment to follow God's plan and will for our lives, whether we think our timing is off or that the Lord has forgotten about us. While we revel in the happy sessions of life, we cannot escape those negative times and seasons that affect us all. Perhaps they are not completely bad. Times of mourning are also times of remembrance. Although we feel sad at the loss of loved ones, we cherish all the special moments we had with them. Okay, and we've had some loss, all of us have. And if we live, we will have some more losses. But will we follow God's plan? That's a question for all of us to answer in all times. And I think it's whether you um, have a small part, let's say what you might think is a small part in the church, or whether you're a pastor, you know, are you going to follow God's plan? Are you going to always say, I know what's best. I know which way to go. You know, I don't need to pray about this. You know, the Bible tells us that we ought to always pray and lean not to our own understanding because we have a great big God that knows tomorrow. You don't, but he knows tomorrow, okay? So are we going to follow his plan or come up with our own, you know? The Bible tells us that a good man's footsteps are ordered by the Lord. Are our footsteps ordered by the Lord, or are they ordered by me? Sister Carter, go ahead. We must also realize that different seasons of life are more easily recognized than others. On many occasions, we will feel in tune with the plan of, and will of God. In these wonderful times, everything seems to click perfectly, working in harmony. At other times, we may find ourselves struggling to discern the will and plan of God while we should and should always examine ourselves to ensure we are following the Lord to the best of our ability. We must also realize we, are all face, we all face times when God has chosen to be silent. Such seasons may be a test of our faithfulness. We must continue serving him with all our might waiting for the glorious time when he once again speaks a word into our lives. Amen. So, we say that we must try to stay in tune with the Lord, and we have to realize that God hasn't forgotten about us. He knows exactly where we're at today. Amen. Whether we're 25 years old or whether we're 75 years old, God knows where we're at today. And he knows where he wants to take us today 
not where we want to go tomorrow. Because where we might want to go tomorrow will cause us much trouble. You know, so many times, you know, we should be like uh, young children that are wise to listen and not be ready to move so fast. You know, we've seen young people make big mistakes real quick, haven't we, all the time. You know, I can remember a lot of times telling young people when they get their driving license. I said, you know, you, know, you got your driving license and things, and you can react to things faster than older people, but you don't have the experience. You know, you don't know what that car will do. You don't know what that car will do in ice, on water, at high speed, you know. You don't know that. I was thinking about that the other day, how, how fast some of these cars are today, how they can get to zero to 60 so far. But when you start thinking about it, how much travel they have done in one second at 60 miles an hour, and then you learn you don't have time to hit the brakes. A little kid jumping in front of you, and you're going to hit them. If you're moving, I don't know what, 200 feet a second or so, maybe more than that. Yeah, you would be more than that. But you don't have the experience, and you don't realize that. So you get yourself in trouble. We hear people every day in car accidents going too fast, or they took a curve. They didn't realize that the, those, the rubber on that car couldn't hold that curve. Yes? Because I remember when we all remember when we got licensed, we didn't have to have so many hours of practice. Now. Now, when my, when my son got his license, you had to have so many credit hours of driving. Back then, we didn't have that. So you're right, Dean Carter. So, I, I, so the world realized that, that kids, people who are getting license need to have the wisdom and make a good choice. So that's the reason they implemented those hours in of kids having hours um, driving. Amen. And, and it's just like in the spiritual too, you know, because a lot of times I have told the kids, I said, you don't have the control you think you do of the car. I said, you don't have to have an accident. But because you may be not willing to listen, you will have one. You know, because some kids start off and they never have accidents because they're careful and they don't drive faster than what they can handle the car and things. You know, but the same in the spiritual too. Sometimes people have tore up churches and things because they went so fast on what they wanted to do. Yes, did I see somebody else? Okay. Sister, Sister Carter, would you go ahead? Timing is critical in the Christian life. We cannot underestimate the importance of time. The, saving, the saying, timing is everything, illustrates this key principle that governs the universe, our daily lives, and our, and our eternity. We must appreciate God's timing and walk in it. Doing, doing so is essential to a successful Christian life. We may, feel strong, we, may, we may feel a strong desire to step out, step out and embrace our calling and a specific ministry opportunity. While God and our leaders may appreciate our zeal, the timing may, may not be right. We may need to cultivate our gifts and exercise patience. In fact, many Christians have talked about their initial disappointment and not being able to participate in a particular ministry at a certain time. Later on, God opened the right door for them in his timing. Hindsight, as they say, is 2020. Often these Christians tell of realizing how unprepared they were until God gave them a weapon, a, a season, to learn more and enhance their gifts. When we think about right timing in the Christian life, we must look to Jesus as our example. Many may have thought he should have begun his ministry at 12 years old when he answered the question of the teachers in the temple. Others may have thought 18 or 21 was a good age. Jesus, however, patiently waited until his 30s for the right time. In fact, he came to earth with perfect timing. Amen. So even Jesus Christ has set up times for what he was going to do. And as this lesson is telling us, some people probably would think, well, how come he didn't start his ministry at 12? But it wasn't time, was it? It wasn't time. The Bible tells us that when he did even come to earth, that it was at the, the, the fullness of time. 
he knew when he wanted to come, didn't he? Because everything was set forth, even though Isaiah prophesied, what, 400 years before, you know, about that. But it wasn't time for him to come then 400 years earlier, you know. And do you, we also have to understand, too, the time that we were born in is the exact time that God wanted us to be born in. You didn't need to be born 100 years ago, you know, or nor did you need to be born yesterday. Yes, brother. Deacon, that, this thing about time, ooh, we can go on for a while. That's so true, Deacon. Um, what I see happens a lot. I never understood it, but it happens uh, not just in this church, but in many churches. Mm -hmm. Say, for instance, if you were the pastor and you told me it's not my time, why they call it church hurt and leave the church? Because you said it's not my time. Well, I will sit down until it is my time. Well, because they don't understand the importance of time, you know. And they get hurt. That's what our lesson really is as we come to the end is trying to get us to remember this. But don't stop waiting on the Lord. Don't stop. Don't get tired of doing well what you know to do well right now because in due time you're going to be rewarded and you know what I looked so many times back in the book of uh, Hebrew and it talks about all the people of faith and how and especially Abraham even though Abraham didn't see that city that he's looking for but in faith he knew that he was going to see it in God's time we're not going to receive everything necessarily that we want in this life. It's not important to have everything that we may want in this life. What's, what's more important is that time when time ends and there's time no more. And we don't have to worry about time anymore because everything will be in eternity. And that's what, that's what we're looking forward to. The Bible tells us don't get tired in well-doing. And we have to remember that our Redeemer liveth. He's not dead. You know, he knows where we're at today. Are there any comments this morning? Any more comments? Our own time. And this lesson to me, as good as all these lessons are, makes me think about the time that I'm in right now, you know, um, it just makes me think and realize that God knows where I'm at right now, you know, and things may not be everything like I would like to see them right now, but God has it all in his control. At this time, will somebody take up their offering this morning? Deacon Carter. Yes. Is it okay? Oftentimes, oftentimes we think about it in God's timing. It's set so that he gets the glory. Um, we, uh, we, we look at time and we think that things should always happen on our timing. But God has a perfect time and it's set so that he, sure that he gets the glory, that no one can claim glory. He has a specific time for everything so that he gets the glory, Amen. not 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 us, not 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 your brother, your sister, not someone else, but him. And so that's oftentimes why he has us wait and wait because there's a perfect time. And if you're not in position, you won't be able to receive re receive it. If you get out of position, uh, similar uh, Moses, there was a perfect time for him to be at the at the sea where where he had to be, and there was a perfect time for him to to, to do what he did. So that the, so. Why did the Lord wait for the enemies that wanted him to see that the enemy was coming and wanted you to see it so that so that you can so he could show himself to be God? Amen. Amen. Other comments this morning? Yes. I do have one that had a, a side note on the side that said, think about a time when God appeared to be silent. How did you make it through to hear his voice again? talking to myself, I had to shut up 
because when I was talking, I couldn't hear God. Amen. So I had to shut my own self up to be able to hear what God was saying to me. That's right. We can be making so much noise and saying so much that we can't hear God. And sometimes we just need to shut up, be quiet. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That was just a few notes I had made here. Do not get it. You will get it in well time, the right time, okay? Stand fast. Don't quit. Keep pushing on while you're waiting for the change to come. Your Redeemer liveth. He has not forgotten you. He brought you out. He brought you out before. He can bring you out again. Your gift will make room for you. Those were just some little notes that I made to help me with the lesson today. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. What I'm going to say now, it's got something to do with me and uh, uh, my husband. Um, when we, when, when he come up to me and ask me a question, uh, he says, uh, can I take you out? And I thought, okay, it's all right. But, but then when we went out, I, I told him I'd take my car because I wasn't interested in nobody here in the Christ Temple Church. And um, I, I told him, yeah, and he said, Oh, I love you. This is a God thing. I said, well, I'm going to tell you one thing right in his face. I looked at him. I said, I do not love you. I don't know nothing about you, and you don't know nothing about me, so you keep all his stuff to yourself. <laughs> but he kept saying, it's a God thing. It's a God thing. I said, I ain't seen nothing in this about no God thing because I asked God what I wanted, and this is not what I wanted. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did. I know what I want, but I didn't want him. That much I did know. And he said, I love, I love, he just kept saying, I love you, it's a God thing, it's a God thing. I said, I need to get away from you because you, you really hurt me. You just getting on the, like the little nerves. And he said, where you want to go, I'll pay for it. And I thought, what is this? I don't understand none of this. And my sister and my daughter said, you love me? I said, I don't love that man, y'all better get off of me. Y'all know how I can get, well, you Jerry know how I can get because I can't get into it. So, one day I was just thinking and sitting and thinking, and the Lord dropped it in my heart. He says, yeah, that's, that's, he was. So I had, my thing of it is, he, Watley had the time. I didn't have it. Because I didn't see nothing between me and him. I could not see it. But God had spoke to him and not me. So he had the time, and he was working on his time because he was not going to give up. God didn't give him the desire to give up. But I'm saying this is, is that when God's time is timing, he's going to let you know that he's in it, and it's okay. But it took a long time for me to, to see God in all this. But when I did see it, I said, okay, this is God working, so I'm going to go with this. But I'm glad I did wait on God and let him direct me because I could have got the wrong thing for what I was looking for. But God knew what I needed. So he waited. His time was perfect. But when we look at it, we don't think it's perfect because we want what we want. And if we don't get what we want, we're going to think of something else to do, say boom, boom, boom. But just wait on God and let him work it out. And it would be. Amen. That's true. Sometimes we don't, we can't, we don't know God's time. We can't see what he sees, you know. And that's one thing I learned, I think, by being here at the church. (laughs) I don't pay the sisters any attention when they say, "I, I don't know, but because I had seen too many times, <laughs> you know, that later on, you know, no, I don't like him. I'm not interested in him. I said, oh, I said okay, we'll see, yeah. you know, <laughs> we'll see. 
What'd she say? What'd she say? You have them in my house? Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh but yeah, you know, God knows best. He really does, you know. And his timing is best. If there's no more comments, can we stand? And we look to the Lord. Precious Father in heaven, we truly thank you for your word this morning. Lord, we thank you for your timing, Lord, not our timing. Lord, help us, O oh God, to be sensitive to your timing, O oh God, and not move ahead of you, but that we will be always found in your time. And we ask this, and we praise, and we bless your name, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.